Hello everybody and welcome back to the Medbros channel and I am super excited to finally bring the step one study plan video to you guys right now. And this has been a long one in the making. I've been kind of helping some individuals go through step one and want to make sure what I'm about to tell you works because it's kind of one of the biggest exams you're ever going to take for your career and I don't want to just be throwing out information here and there. And uh, it, it went very successfully for the individuals that I was tutoring and uh, they worked really hard and both got above a two. 60 so I am fairly confident that the plan that I have put together all the resources everything I'm gonna s so I'm pretty confident in the plan the resources everything I'm gonna put forward in this video and I wish you guys the best of luck and let's get right into the video so as many of you know step one is a very difficult exam and a very important exam as well I was lucky enough to do pretty good on it myself I gave myself six weeks of dedicated time to study for it so let's see if we can share the plan here on how to get you guys up even even higher than my score let's get everybody in the 260 range so how are we gonna do this so let's get one important thing out of the way I'm gonna give you guys the resources and what you guys need to do to score high on the exam but a lot of this exam because it is a recall exam it's not really a critical reasoning exam it really is how much you can sit down and have the discipline to get all this stuff jammed into your brain so that you can recall it during the exam so this really comes down to your dedication your discipline so studying for this exam really does start on day one of medical school and don't worry if you're already past day one and you're well into your studying maybe even near your dedicated time I'm gonna have a lot to say that's gonna help you out but it'll just trust me it'll all come together here so let's start with what is the first step and the first step is gonna be how you acquire all the information needed for this kind of recall exam so step one getting the information so the medical curriculum actually varies quite a bit depending on what medical school you go to. A majority of medical schools will kind of start off with a basic science curriculum, starting with biochemistry, making sure there's a nice little foundation for that built in. And that's usually where the kind of base is gonna come from, your classes. What are they teaching you in class? And myself, I would recommend focusing more on the high yield stuff. Obviously, if there's something you're interested in, if there's a guest lecture or something coming in and you're interested in hearing that, all the best to you. Anything you learn is could possibly help you treat patients in the future, and that's what this is all about. But as for the exam, you really wanna use your time to focus on the high yield things going on in the classroom. So the best way to ensure that you are focusing on the high yields is to cross-reference what you're doing in class with the high yield resources out there. And I've put together what I think are the most important high yield resources that you must have as a medical student. These resources being Sketchy, Pathoma, First Aid, and you world spiffu <laughs> now i know people have heard of ufap being thrown around but i we're going with spiffu okay if you like anki power to you but these are the ones that i found critical the must know resources you have to use these it's spiffu the big thing here is that it is never too early to pick up spiffu resources you really should be starting medical school out with these in hand and using them as you go across the material and it's not just about going through the material you really need to know this base level knowledge that's in these resources inside and out you need to go over them multiple times and that brings us to our third concept here and that's repetition so I know the word spaced out repetition gets thrown around a lot and people might think going over a video twice or even three times is repetition. That's not really repetition to me. Repetition is you go over a resource so well that you really can recite it yourself from memory. When I used to drive to school and back, it was a bit of a commute, so I would listen to Pathoma on the way there and back. And on the way there, what I used to do is I used to listen to one of his lectures, and on the way back, I used to try to recall it all from memory and just say it out loud to myself. So I would be able to say his entire lecture on like acute inflammation and the process is going on in each step. I would verbally say that to myself on the way back, off the top of my head, that was my goal. So you really need to know this stuff inside now. Watching a sketchy video once or twice, seeing those animated pictures once or twice is not really repetition. I, by the time I took the exam, I had seen each sketchy video maybe 17 to 18 times. And of course that's not full sitting there watching it through 17 times. I would put it to like 10, 15 times speed to see the pictures go by. But regardless, it was repetition on repetition on repetition because that's all it is. It's getting the information in your head, being able to bring it back immediately as fast as you can and then applying it to the question that you have in front of you that's really all this exam comes down to and the best way to do it is get the information repeat it regurgitate it <laughs> so i like to be really specific with my advice so what do i mean by use these resources with your classes well let's start with something like pathoma 
So when you're in school and you start learning pathology and you learn, you know, your neoplasia lectures and you start going into systems with cardiovascular pathology and what goes wrong when you have things like heart attacks and, you know, the different steps pathologically what's going on, you should be doing Pathoma videos along with that. Pathoma guy is a genius. This man is one of the best teachers I've ever had. Everything that comes out of this man's mouth is high yield. I would pause after sentences sometimes. He'd say a sentence, I'd pause. He'd be like, did I really process what he said? Because every sentence he'll slip in something that is super high yield and it could be a, a question on your exam really anything that he says so really solid shout out to Pathoma guy I should look up his name it's a Dr. Sitar so shout out to you Dr. Sitar uh, but lovingly my class called him Pathoma guy and along those lines make sure you pay for these resources Pathoma guy put in a lot of work in putting this together it's super helpful resource I don't think I would have gotten you know countless amounts of questions right without his videos and his explanations were so clear so make sure you guys support some of these individuals that are really putting in their effort and Pathoma guy definitely is one of them another critical resource was sketchy and some people will just tell me dude I can't learn with sketchy I can't learn with these pictures and whatnot but you have to you have to have to use sketchy I've had countless people say that and then they use it and finally get around to you know coming around to opening up and using it and they love it and they can't imagine how it is without it you know it seems a little goofy in the beginning seeing these pictures and trying to memorize off of them but you have to have to have to use sketchy that is critical to memorize the countless drugs and bugs facts and hey maybe it might be silly to look at these pictures but the information in there regardless is critical so you might just learn information from just watching those videos and it's a fun way to get the information as well. First aid is kind of like the bible to medical student learning and you really should be following it along with your studies your classroom studies whatever you're learning there make sure you try to find it in first aid kind of read the section keep up with it. The key is to get your first pass of first aid done before you're dedicated maybe you might even get two passes done before you're dedicated but you really need to go through first aid front to back you need to know everything in that book that's like the bible for medical student knowledge so make sure you got that first aid on deck i think everybody already knows that one and now on to the really big resource that i think if you have this resource alone and maybe you just do one semester of medical school so you know you know some basics on what you're talking about i think you could pass the exam right there and then if you just do this resource the right way and that is you world the thing is there's so much information packed into these questions it's not just questions it's a question bank that if you get a wrong answer to or you you go ahead and read their explanations there's all sorts of pictures diagrams uh, you know some in-depth explanations for why everything is wrong and in those explanations you'll get uh, explanations for the various diseases and different uh, you know answer choices that were there it's just a wealth of knowledge in this 2000 something quite I think they're up to like 3,000 questions now because they keep adding them so it's like this question bank that you can actually learn from so if I could pick one resource that's the most important, even better than first aid, I would say it would be UWorld because you can pretty much pick up what everybody's talking about from there. You can pick up how they're devising questions, how they're kind of wording questions, what kind of things they focus on, what are the big concepts, everything you can pick up from UWorld. And I don't know how they get it so accurate. It was more accurate to me than their official NBME practice exams, UWorld was by far the most accurate thing to the real exam there is. So if you're scoring well in UWorld, that is a very good sign that you're gonna do well on the actual exam. Now, when to start UWorld? A lot of people try to save the questions for their dedicated period time later. I, I kind of disagree with that. What I would do is, if you're in cardiology, do a cardiology block. A block is 40 questions. Just do your cardiology block while you're in your block in class. You'll have plenty of questions to save for later dedicated time. And there are plenty of other question banks as well. It's not like the knowledge you learned before you're going to forget just because you did it earlier. It, that doesn't make too much sense because there's still a lot more questions for you during your dedicated. So I suggest during your medical school career, you follow you well to make sure you're keeping up with the questions. Again, same kind of concept, keeping up with the high yield resources while you're doing class. It'll really help solidify the important concepts and really help you during your dedicated time. So you're doing second second and third passes instead of doing your first pass closer to your exam time which is just it's just a stressful experience and the less stressful you can make your dedicated time the better you're going to feel overall and your score I bet would also be better because you're just going to be more calm and more confident. Along these lines I think a lot of people use their question banks incorrectly. I think there's a really optimized good way to use your question bank to get the most out of the questions and everything that the question bank has to offer and this kind of ties along to a video idea had coming up in the next video where I call it the spiderweb theory 
and uh, or the Medros method. I don't know, whatever sounds better. And because I've never seen this kind of unique learning style used. And I'm gonna go over all of that in a future video. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for that. That's one I'm super, super excited for because it has entirely changed the way I really study for stuff. And I think it'll really help you guys out as well. So stay tuned for that. So there are a few other resources that I did use throughout my time. Like Firecracker was a good resource to kind of just pull up information. It has a nice little search option and it has links to up to date and other kind of interesting resources and gives you little tidbits of information that are not in other resources that I did find on the exam. So not a critical resource, but one I definitely use. I just want to make sure I cover all my bases on what I did. Um, Osmosis videos as well. Osmosis has a YouTube channel where they have some really good videos. Uh, shout out to you guys for putting together such clean, nice videos uh, for certain physiology and pathology. So go check that out as well. Then there were videos online like uh, the 100 images that all USMLE students need to know. I'll link all this in the description on the stuff that I did, but I think you must know those images. There were some histological images, some pathological images that you had to know. Uh, so link to those videos will be in the description. So just resources like that, I kind of did here and there. Um, I tried all these kind of flashcard things that people swear by. Anki was just too complicated for me, too tedious, too much time that I could have been doing some other UWOD questions or something like that. Um, and yeah, I just feel like also, these resources really allow you to have the most bang for your buck, the most time investment to output that you get. Because you're not sitting there, you're not making cards and doing this. You're really just digesting material and then processing it and using it in your world. That's all this really comes down to and that's all you really need to do for a really, really good score. I mean, if your goal is just to pass, you, like I said, can really just get away with going through UWorld world and looking at your incorrects and maybe going through first aid and you should be able to pass that exam if you have the dedication and the kind of sitting and you really get through that entire question bank. If you're looking to pass, I guarantee you that's all you'll need to do and maybe when they change your pass, no pass, definitely a lot of the step one stress is gonna go away because it's gonna come down to those resources. You guys get through the bank, you guys know what you're doing, go ahead and get your pass grade. Shouldn't be an issue. So to summarize, if you're just trying to nail this exam and just get through it, spiffu, repetition, go in there and execute on test day and you're gonna be all good. But you guys are here to get the best score you possibly could do. You're just not here to take the exam, you're here to murder the exam. So let's get into how you do that. The big thing you have to understand is the majority of people taking this exam are gonna know around 60% of all the information in SPIFU. They're just gonna know it. Everyone's gonna have that base knowledge and the test makers know that these are the resources people are using. This is the information that's kind of known to everybody. How do we branch off of that to kind of create that bell curve, to create those outliers, and how are we gonna throw them off? How are we gonna pull off material that isn't in these resources? So that's what the test maker's mentality is. Really, they know what you're using, you need that base material that I just presented, but how do you go above and beyond that to get into that upper echelon of that bell curve? So like I said, everyone is gonna know around 60% of SPIFU. Well, one way you can make yourself stand out is to know 100% of SPIFU. Know your material inside now and be able to call it like that. If I see something like Crest Syndrome, you should be able to say calcinosis, raynaud's, esophageal dysmotility, uh, scl sclerodactyly, telangiectasias, a bunch of other things. If I say DeGeorge's, say Cash 22, just whatever it is, all these antibodies, what's associated with like auto antibody X or Y, of HLA haplotype DR4, like what is that, rheumatoid arthritis, like just start saying stuff, just start going crazy. You have to be able to just have it on the top of your head. And once you're at that level, you know your material. And honestly, this is the hardest part, at least for me, it was very, very difficult to sit down and just go through materials, go through pages of first aid, go through uh, sketchy videos, even though they were pretty fun. It's still, you, when you sit down and you're just learning new stuff and you're doing these passes, this is a really difficult time. But understand once you get through that, questions get pretty fun actually, until you get the really frustrating ones that pull stuff out of nowhere. Those are really annoying. But uh, the funner part is the questions, the really grueling part is really just kind of digesting that first, maybe even second pass material. So after doing all of this material, you go and take your simulation test and you're still sitting around 235, 245. What's going on? How do we get to that 250, 260 range? Well, this is gonna come down to the test itself, the test making strategy, the test mentality you have to be in. Because while I argue this is not a critical reasoning exam, it is a recall exam, you still have to be able to process what you have to recall from the question. So when they send you a question, you have to understand, okay, what disease process is this? What are they trying to get at? What angle are they working on this 
knowledge base that I know about what angle are they coming at it from and what exactly do they want me to kind of pull out of my brain to kind of regurgitate out onto this. And I could stay here and do videos on how to tackle you world questions and how to get in the mentality of breaking this down. If you guys want me to, let me know in the comments. But really what this comes down to is just repetition of questions. Once you do them in a timed, randomized environment, that's critical as well because I've seen people in UWorld, they kind of sit on that untimed tutor mode for way too long. You need to get in the thick of it. So the faster you can transition from doing a kind of untimed tutor mode environment where you're sitting there doing these questions kind of relax to really doing them in a randomized timed environment that's going to be more conducive to your learning you really need to get in that mindset of how you're going to be when you're taking the exam how is it going to feel to kind of answer these questions and process what's going on in this kind of high pressure environment and then you're going to make those exponential gains that i'm always talking about i'm always saying look if you're going to practice in your backyard by yourself at basketball, you're not gonna get as good as you are when you go to like the G League, or even if you do like, to make it an apples to apples analogy, if you're just kind of shooting around in the backyard, just chilling, you're not gonna perform as well as if you start setting up these cones and start tying yourself and doing all these drills, you're gonna get better that way. So make sure you're doing that, you're really processing what's going on, and then with time, you're slowly gonna start realizing, look, these are the questions, this is why I'm getting them wrong, this is how they want me to think. The, the question bank will kind of train you to how to think. So at this point, you've done spit food, you've done you world you feel really confident you feel very skilled with how to tackle these questions you're in the mindset you're ready to go you have plenty of time left when you're taking the exam you take your simulation test it's saying you're going to get anywhere from 240 to 260 you know hooray you're you're in the zone you're doing well you're good go take it congratulations <laughs> but how do we go even further beyond this because this that was the video guys that was it that's how you get the score, those are the resources, the rest is up to you to kind of have the discipline, the grind out, that's really all I did. And you know, if I had more time, I would start earlier so it's not as stressed as I was toward the end because I did try to kind of cram it into six weeks, really. And uh, luckily I did well in my courses so I knew the material, but if I had redone it, I would have started earlier. I would have you know, really gone more hardcore on these resources, uh, known this stuff inside now, really focused more on the questions, maybe even done another question question bank if you have time it's all about how much time you have so if i had um, more time i would maybe get a kaplan question bank or whatever the next best question bank is out there the more questions you do the more used to you are with these questions these questions sometimes pull up information that you haven't seen in any of these resources so i would do all that with my time i might have been able to break 265 something like that around there uh, but with six weeks of, of practice i was very happy with my 257 and i put this out there for you guys send in your scores i want to see you guys beat that i want to see a lot of you guys in the 260s another factor that a lot of people overlook is test taking mentality it's a long and grueling exam it's a long long day you've studied all this time and the, really the pressure comes down to you on that day it's very very intense a lot of people i've heard of uh you know even personally i've, I've talked to some individuals that just broke down on that day they, there was a couple questions a block that threw them off it kind of messed up their score their score they felt they didn't do as well because they just couldn't keep that focus you have to stay focused on that day you have to mentally train for that day before you go there you have to be in the right mindset to take this exam and it's it's a serious deal like i'm talking like like this exam like you're going to war but like you really are for this one day going on a mental war and you need to make that clear to your mind and be ready for it and as a side note i found the most accurate predictors to be u world simulation one and two averages and then like add a couple points to that i think that's probably the most accurate predictor that you're going to get the nbmes was just all over the place those are terrible exams they look nothing like the real exam uh, they might throw in a few questions that kind of look NBME practice exam -y on the actual exam. But for the most part, it's like UWorld. And I did take a few NBMEs. I'm, I do recommend taking a couple of them because there will be questions like that on the real exam. Very few of them, but there will be. So you're just, you're ready for it. They're very small uh, stemmed questions. Not a lot of information, a lot of just straight recall. So that's again what it comes down to is just recall so but that's the most accurate predictor i have found for your score a lot of people are asking you know i see people looking oh how do i predict my score well that's what worked best for me and a couple of other individuals um and even if you go online some of these uh sites you can see that it's a pretty good predictor this u world simulation so overall my summary for how to kill this exam is spifu repetition simulation and get out there and execution of the exam so that is the big picture story for the entire plan get out there and kill it and that was pretty much the end of the video but i do want to end this video with how do you get 
in the 270s? How do we go beyond the 250s, the 260s? How do you get up there with those individuals that have gotten 270? We'll have the answer for you after talking to a couple individuals that have gotten in this range and that have told me the truthful information about how they got in this range. Not the, yeah, bro, yeah, I took like five weeks or something like that. I did the exams, I told you, I just did like five resources and I got like 270, no problem. That's horse crap, that's bull. That's absolutely nonsense. Don't ever listen to anybody that has told you that. If somebody tells you that and they got 270, just, just get away from them, disgust me. Don't lie to me like that. So to get to this 270 range, the key is that from day one or even before day one, these students that score this high are completely absorbing the knowledge that is around them. Let me make this really clear. So say you master all this spifu and you do all this U world and you know the stuff inside now. Like I said, the test takers know that people are getting it from these resources. They're getting this information. So what they're gonna do is there's gonna be stuff that is obviously not on these resources. I'm talking about straight recall, not even critical reasoning or anything. They're straight recall questions from journal articles, from clinical rotations, stuff that you'll learn later in your career, but they're putting it on this exam to give you that nice bell curve because everybody would get super high scores if everything was on these resources that we're looking at. So how do you get a 270? So even before day one, some of these individuals are working as EMTs. They might have knowledge of you know certain emergency procedures. Say somebody has taken a clinical elective rotation where they saw a central line placed, and somebody you know you you just figured out the anatomy of you know landmarks for the central line. Uh, say another time you're on another rotation and you learn the unique side effects of a certain drug. All these kind of little factoids from everywhere come together and kind of build this individual that is paying attention to all this stuff for years and years and years, starting from, it could start from day one in medical school, it could start before that, but they're just paying attention. So like when you have a guest lecturer come in, who's a neurologist guest lecturer talking to you about some phantom limb syndrome or something, a lot of us will tune it out and just start doing our U world uh, practice questions. These individuals will absorb that information. They'll keep that information in the back of their head in case something like complex regional pain syndrome or phantom limb syndrome or something comes up on an actual test that's not in our resources, they will know it because they have heard about it. Uh, same with the individual that is on the clinical rotation. Somebody schedules an elective rotation and they just happen to see something and know it and it shows up on the exam. The more experience you have with stuff, the more likely you are gonna be able to get the questions right when they come up. People that do multiple question banks. A lot of these question banks are gonna have stuff that are not in these resources, but they're on this random question that you studied. If you do this for the two years you're in medical school or even longer for some individuals, you have this vast breadth of knowledge and these little factoids everywhere and you can hit these recall questions out of nowhere that hit most students hard, you're gonna be able to get them. So if anybody ever tells you, look, I got a 270, I only studied for four weeks, honey, your dedicated was four weeks. Your actual studying that you've been doing where you've been doing well in class, you've been keeping up with the resources, you've been kind of doing all this extra stuff, whether it be reading a journal article or learn, picking stuff up from your elective, they've been paying attention. They've been putting all this together and that's what comes together to give this individual to get 270 plus, like 99th percentile kind of scores. That's where that comes from. And I've gotten this information from talking to individuals that have gotten 270s, uh, online information when people are posting stuff and just my own experience on where would I have seen some of these? I vividly remember some of these questions on my step one that were not in any resources. When I got out of my exam, I went to go look them up and they're just not there. This is stuff you pick up during your rotations, during your lectures, during wherever it might be. And then it comes up on this exam or even resources that are applicable to your residency later on down the road. So unfortunately, is it stuff that you can study for and stress over? I don't think it's worth it, but if you do want that 270 and you're just dying for it and how do I get it, that is the true, true facts behind individuals that get 265, 270s. Uh, that's that's where those scores are coming from. And I, it just irks me every time I see people say, yeah, my dedicate was like five to six weeks. It's like, no, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry, this is a recall exam. This is not a clinical reasoning exam. It's not you can reason through some of these questions. You have to know the stuff and the answer choices. And that doesn't, doesn't magically appear in your head one day. You have to hear it and work for it and you know come across it during your 
time that you're studying and working. So just wanted to get that out there to make sure a lot of people kind of get stressed out on how do we even get higher than that? How, you know, how are some people doing it? Just want to make that clear. So anyway, that is the ultimate plan, guys. Spiffu, repetition, simulation, and then execution. Go kill it on that day. And I wish you all the best of luck. All of you guys that unfortunately still have to take a score test for the rest of you guys about to get ready for this pass, no pass test. Just to stick to the first part of the plan, I think Spiffu will be just totally fine and maybe even overkill for you to pass your exam unless they make it insanely hard to pass, which I don't think they'll do. Uh, if you want my opinion on the pass, no pass, I did another video here uh, on this channel. Make sure you check that out. And then stay tuned because I'm really excited to share this kind of spiderweb med bros memorization theory. It's not a memorization theory. Spiderweb med bros method, whatever I'm gonna call it. Stay tuned for that. I'm super excited to share that with you guys coming up. And as usual, thank Thank you guys for checking out the channel be sure to check out the rest of the stuff on this channel subscribe to stay up to date with everything we're doing love you guys and we'll see you guys in the next one